Hi there, I'm Tiffany from Daisy Farm Crafts and thank you for stopping by our YouTube channel today or our website if this is where you're seeing the tutorial for this ribbed diamond blanket. Um, this is made with Burnat Baby Velvet, which our friends at Yarnspirations.com sent to us to try out and we've just loved trying to make up all sorts of different patterns using this velvet but it has been a little bit tricky because velvet is really slippery so before we get started i want to show you what i mean why it's tricky um you'll see that sometimes you will get a little loop that will pull out if you are not being extremely careful with your tension now I am finding that when I use this front post and back post double crochet, the loops are definitely, I didn't really have that much problem. It was probably me being lazy and that's why I got that one. But I would say out of this whole blanket, I have found two and that's all. So I would say this front post and back post double crochet stitch, oh, there's my other one right there. I got lazy through here. Huh. Anyway. It did a really good job of um, keeping the stitches really uh, pretty tight. You want to keep your tension tight with this type of yarn. Um, it's a you know it's a relatively new product, so I think you know there's probably a learning curve. But oh my gosh, this is the softest blanket ever. So it's just luxurious we lo i love it i love it so today i'm gonna do the little tutorial for the um this rib diamond blanket so i've got a little swatch going but um if you will work 14 times 2 that's 28 plus 3 so 31 stitches 31 chains i'll get back and we are going to start making this pattern I always recommend starting my blanket patterns with a swatch. You really want to get your tension worked out, and especially if you're new with working with velvet, I really think you will want to see if the H, this is a Susan Bates Comfort Grip, US size H-8, five point millimeter hook. And you, it depends on if you crochet tightly or loosely, you want to make sure your tension is pretty tight. So if you need to go down to a G, this is the time to experiment and figure it out. So we're going to start in the third, one, two, third chain, and you're going to make a row of all double crochet in each stitch across. Okay, so I will, um, work across i'll let you do that and um we'll meet back and then this the pattern will start now if you have the graph from off of the website that is probably really helpful to have in front of you um or just pull it up on your screen and um, that's exactly how we're going to follow follow the graph as well so that's either print it out or have it have it handy in front of you Okay, hey, make sure you do a double crochet in each one of those chains. All right, what I want you to have is to make sure you have 29 double crochets. Don't count those chain twos that we started with. 29 actual double crochet stitches. Then we're gonna start the first row of the graph. We're gonna chain two and then turn our work. And now going forward, this chain two is always going to count as the first stitch of your graph. So if you look in the bottom right hand corner at number one, right here, this is stitch number one. So now we're going to just work front post double crochet. Those will be those white spaces that you see. We'll just pop those out. This is stitch number two. Here's number three, number four, number five, six, seven. And then you'll see on the graph that on stitch number eight, there's a red box, and that's going to tell you to work a back post double crochet. 
So instead of popping the post forward like we've been, you're going to kind of pop it to the back with your hook like that. And that will get it to pop out on the other side. Just one. Now work across. And I believe it was 13 of them. Yeah, I think it's 13. I was counting earlier. I might have to stop and double check, but I'm pretty sure. So now I am going kind of fast. I don't mean to, but I really do think that you got to be a little bit of an advanced beginner. I want you to be really comfortable with a double crochet. So that's why I'm not showing you like, so if you are a brand new beginner, this project is not a good one to start with. But if you're really comfortable with double crochet and you've been interested in, you know, all I'm doing is I'm popping that stitch forward. Okay, how many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven. Here's twelve. And here's thirteen. Now we're going to pop this one to the back. And now the last stitches. I mean, really, the, that's the only tricky thing about this pattern is just the final stitches. I just want to make sure that you are understanding that the chain two is counting as a stitch throughout the pattern after the first row. So let's see if I got this right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, we're gonna ignore that those first two turning chains on just that round. Going forward, we will pay attention to them, but on this first, they can just, you can ignore them. Chain two and turn, and now, we're going to want to keep the stitches all to the same side, same to the back. So these were our front post double crochets. We're going to continue. We're going to technically do back post. You know, we're going to keep them popping out to the same side. So these are still the white spaces and that is stitch number two. So here's number three, four, five, six, and you're going to start getting into a little rhythm here and you'll, you'll see you stop one stitch, um, short and pop this one forward, pop the next three forward. This is the red part on row number two, going, working back left to right. There's our three. And now go back and pop those out to the back. The more you get comfortable with this, it really you won't even you won't even need the graph after you get the first set done. It becomes pretty relaxing. But I wanted to just make sure we get um, a little swatch made, particularly to learn the ends. I'm continuing on. Ah. And I did like this working with the velvet because it was easier to find where to insert my hook. Okay, here I am just stopping one short, but essentially making sure I get my three to pop forward. And back for the final six stitches. One, two, three, 
four, five. Now this time, that turning chain, we do need to count it. So all you're gonna do is just insert your hook into the hole. So it, def it won't necessarily be one that pops forward or backwards, but it does need to be a stitch. You need to remember that that's your last stitch of the row. Chain two and turn, and this chain two counts as the number one stitch. So that's number one on the graph, and here's number two. And now we are on row three. Yeah. Count those white spaces. We're gonna end one short. So here's one, two, three, four, five, because we're gonna pop those ones, this one to the back. I bet you're getting the hang of this. And I hope you can see how I'm, this is the, the hard sometimes to really get your hands to work. <laughs> get that there we go and one more one more extra kind of add a stitch every row okay I'm going to um, why don't you continue to work on that I think that's I mean there's really nothing else to learn I've showed you about making sure that that chain to that you work into that on the, your last row and um, I'm just going to show you one other thing on my other swatch. So you keep working and we'll come back. All right, how's it been going? I hope that the pattern is making sense to you and that you're just alternating these front post and back post double crochet. One thing I wanted you to recognize in the pattern is that there will always just be a row where there's only one that pokes forward and it kind of counts as the bottom of one diamond and the top of another. There's never just two in a row, but you'll see that on, on the graph. Have the graph handy for the first couple sections and then you'll get it. And then the other thing is, is just remember that when you chain two and turn, that this stitch counts as stitch number one on the graph. So for this row, we're still going to continue with our front post. Even though this one kind of hold, is behind, it's okay. It When the blanket's finished, I'll show you. It, it really, it's not noticeable. And, and it was fine. So you work across. And when we get, sometimes this... Working front posts toward you, you'll get a little bit of a break from working all those back posts. It alternates as you go along. So obviously I'll just continue working along and then I'll switch and make this one a back and then we'll have those three and we're on our way. All right, I'm gonna finish up this swatch and then I'm gonna show you how I worked the border. All right, how did your swatch turn out? Isn't that so cool? I just still am amazed at, and it even actually has like a, a square in the middle of it. It can, it's almost like an optical illusion. Here it is on the other side. So on the other side, I've got the diamonds going this way. So you'll decide towards the end of your blanket which row you want to end on and you know, obviously there still will be a half, but you can, you can decide because I'm sure a lot of you will make it the size that you want. Pattern repeat, if I didn't say it before, is 14 plus three. Okay, so we've also had a lot of questions about weaving in the ends for velvet. I wish I would have left myself an even longer tail. When you do it, leave an even longer tail. I go ahead and weave this in and out as many times as possible. I wish this would have been about three inches longer, but um, I kind of worked the tail up 
in as many posts as I possibly could just to try and I worked it back on itself just because this yarn is just so super slippery. So you don't want it to come undone. So I work back and forth within the blanket. I went ahead when I needed to change yarn colors, I tied the yarn into tight knots. Oops, I just came back on myself there. Like two or three and really yanked them tight. I, I'm trying it, you know, like I said, um, Velvet is a relatively new product. It came out late in 2018. So these are just, you know, new patterns for me that I'm, I'm working and seeing how it goes. If you have any other experience, I mean, on my Instagram account, we're getting a lot of people saying I washed it and all the loops came out. And so, you know, that's why we're saying, okay, keep your tension tight. I would definitely, we have machine washed this in a laundry bag and it was fine, but I would hand wash, um, definitely hand wash it. But I think for a baby blanket, if this is just like a little stroller blanket, you know, I think you'd be fine as a gift for gift giving. See, I wish that was just a little bit longer because I would do more. I definitely would do more, but you get the gist of what it's like to weave in the ends by watching. So tie knots, whatever. There's a little bit, you know, you pay a little price, a little trade-off for having, having luxurious yarn to work with. I did not bind off or for this. I went ahead, I went ahead to do the edge. I just, I stopped. I, you know, like I said, I kept that a long loop. Use a marker if you need to, to keep hold that stitch while you weave in ends that you might have or clip them, but I did not um, bind or tie off, cut off. I'll just chain two and I will turn. And what I found for me to keep the ribbing stitch is I worked one double crochet per row. And when I worked the, in that seam to keep the blanket, um, the edge as straight as I possibly could. This is always, oh, the hardest part is getting the sides of the blanket straight. So if, if your sides are a little bit, you know, too spread out to do the one, maybe work an extra one, the point, the goal of working double crochets down the side is to keep them even. But as you go for the next rows, and this is again, please do a practice swatch. You can, you can kind of get this all figured out how you want your border to, to work. Because I, I hate to, you know, sometimes the sides will gather on you or they're, they will pucker on you. All there is, I still am yet to find the magic the magic. This is that starting corner, I think. I'm seeing a chain two. Anyway, when you get to the corner, though, go ahead and work three double crochets around the corner. And then on the ends, that starting end of the blanket, I went ahead and I worked, if it was a front post double crochet, I just went ahead and worked the front post double crochet just to get it to blend in with the blanket. But I did front post all across. Even including this one that's gonna be, that's poking to the back coming up here. And then I also, see, just pop it forward. And I worked the double crochet into the corners, three of them. I don't join the rounds. I just keep going, but I'll show you how to start that next row of ribbing. So if you've gotten this far, go ahead and start working your border around and I'll keep going and I'll show you when I get back around the next up over there. All right, I am back to where I started. 
Remember, I did a chain two and then I just started working down the row. So I'm treating that chain two as the middle of my corner. And I'm going to go ahead, continue around, but I need to make another corner. So all I do is I work kind of as a front post around it, and then I'll work it as a back post stitch, and then I'll work another front post stitch around it. That becomes, that's, that's what you do on every corner. You kind of have to work the front, back, front, or you might come up and it's um, back, front, back, it depends. So since my last stitch was a front, now I just alternate back post and front post double crochet back post front post and I worked this for four rounds and I'll show you again what I did when I got to the corner. So if you can imagine the three double crochets that you made to, you know, to round the corner, the middle of those three double crochets is going to get three double crochet post stitches around it. And you'll alternate them depending on the last stitch that you used. So sometimes it will be front, back, front. Sometimes it will be back, front, back. Okay, so here I am at the back. Let's see what it will turn out to be. Here's my three that make up the corner. And that one was a back. So I, And then this one will be front. So it looks like I'll start with a back post. Like that working around the very same leg I just did. I'm going to pop it forward and they get tight, but that's okay. Don't worry about it. And then I'm going to push and get one more on there. That'll help make the corner. Get me around. Now I'll just start by popping that one forward. and alternate. Now I don't need to join the rounds, just keep going around, do it two more times and on the and always match up um, going forward. If you see a front, keep them to the front. If you see the back, keep them to the back. That's how you'll get that ribbed look. Let me show you on the original blanket. I think that that will help you see it one more time. What I mean by the ribbing, see I kept all these front post to the front, you know, and then these were to the back. They're just alternating. You will be a pro at these front and back post <laughs> double crochets by the time you finish this blanket because that's all this is. So hopefully your corners will work out. Don't stress out too much about it. Just do your best. This velvet is very forgiving. That's another thing why I do like it for beginners because it really makes your stitches look really good. Um, I don't know, there's not so much stitch definition that, you know, you can get away with a little bit. So anyway, thank you all so much for your love for Daisy Farm Crafts. We just sure love having you along. If you are new to following us, I'm the, the wannabe grandma. That's how I started this. I just was starting to crochet blankets in hopes I'd become a grandma. Just almost, you know, given just to just just to hope and I can't believe you know I just started a website because I thought oh maybe if I did become a grandma I'd really want it I'd really want those future grandchildren to know the patterns that of the blankets but then you know one thing led to another I'd like to thank our friends from Yarnspirations that's where you can get this um, baby velvet it's yarnspirations.com of course everything is linked in the description on YouTube or on our website. So, all right, you have a wonderful day.